Okay, next we're going to talk about the sandwich or sometimes referred to as squeeze theorem depending on which textbook that you have. So for something like this, sometimes the limit that you have uh, for f of x might be difficult to find. You might be trying to do a, uh, you might have a division by zero and none of the techniques that you talked about will allow it to work. So that might be something where it might be hard to find the limit. Well, if you can find two other functions uh, where you can kind of sandwich them in between these two and you can find the limit of these two easily then you can automatically find the limit of the middle one. So first let's talk about the setup here. The setup, you're setting it up to where your, your f of x is going to be in between these two functions. So f of x on a certain interval that's containing the c that you're trying to find here. Uh, you're going to be bigger than the g of x function but you're also going to be smaller than the h of x function. So I kind of drew a picture here so you can see visually what's happening. So at C right here, you have f of x is in the middle, your h of x is the bigger one, and your g of x is going to be the smaller one. That's exactly how we have set up here. So if the limit of g and h both approach the same thing, that's important. Both of these n ones have to approach the same thing. And if this one's in between, that means automatically this one's going to approach L as well. So the main thing with these kind of problems is you just want to find two functions g and h and set it up that way. If you can find the limit of these two, then automatically you'll be able to find the limit of the other one because essentially it's sandwiched or squeezed between the h and the g there. So that's how you would do it. So now let's take a look at a couple examples. Okay, we're going to apply the sandwich theorem to this particular one. If I put zero in here, I get division by zero and there's no algebraic techniques I can use in order to change that. I can't put any identities in for cosine either. So this is a case where this, this one, we wouldn't, we wouldn't really know how to do this except to make tables and, or to look at a graph. Okay, we're going to do this one algebraically, so we're going to use the, the sandwich or the squeeze theorem in order to, to do this one. Let's first start with the most complicated part of this problem, which is going to be the cosine. So we have cosine of 1 over x squared. In trig, you talked about that Anytime you do cosine of any angle, the only thing you're going to get is always a number between negative 1 and 1. The reason why is because cosine comes off of the unit circle, and since cosine is an x value, if you're on the unit circle, the biggest the unit circle could be is 1, the smallest it'll be is negative 1. So I could say with this one that I could have negative 1 here, and I could have 1. I could say that definitely is going to be true. My cosine it doesn't have to be bigger than negative 1, but less than 1, it's got to be in between those. We are going to include both of those as well because it could be exactly equal to negative 1 or exactly equal to a 1. Okay, so we have this. This is the first thing we know is going to be uh, true. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we notice that in the original equation, we have an x squared that's out front. So I'm going to multiply everything through by x squared. So I get negative x squared less than or equal to x squared cosine 1 over x squared less than or equal to x squared. So now I have the original function that I have is right in between here. And then I have this one and I have this one. If I look at my theorem that we just talked about before, this is basically saying that your middle function is going to be your f of x. This one over here, the biggest one, we said was h of x. The smallest one was g of x. So I've actually formed something that I know is true. I have to begin with this first when I apply the sandwich theorem. So here's my g is negative x squared and my h is going to be x squared. I want to find the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x squared and positive x squared. Those both should be the same thing. So I know that the limit x approaches 0 of negative x squared is going to equal the limit x approaches 0 of positive x squared. Those are all the same. If I plug 0 in for those, that's going to give me a 0. So I know that the limit of g of x and h of x, both of those are going to be going to 0. So, because of, so basically, because of this right here, so you'll say that the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared cosine 1 over x squared. This one is also going to equal 0 and you'll say by the sandwich or you can say squeeze theorem, whatever one uh, your book uses. Squeeze theorem. We said that's going to be true. 
Okay, so again, we start out with this. We start with a true statement. Cosines between negative one and one. We multiply both sides by x squared. We got that to form our g of x and h of x, and we noticed that when we took the limit of both of those, the limit as, as x approaches zero of, x, of negative x squared will equal the limit x approaches zero of x squared, which is zero. So that the basically you're sandwiching in this middle one, you're gonna sandwich it or squeeze it in between these two. So because these two go to zero automatically, this main, the other one we have is gonna to go to zero also by the squeeze theorem. So the answer for this problem by using the squeeze theorem, it's gonna be zero. Okay, we're gonna do another one here by using the squeeze theorem. You wanna start with this part, you start with the trig portion because we wanna develop our first true statement. Okay, now just like cosine, your sine also is from the unit circle. That's gonna be using values between negative one and one. The x values on the unit circle have to be between negative one and one. So we can say this as our uh, true statement. Our sine has to be between negative one, bigger than negative one, and less than negative one. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply by x to the fourth. Now the, the last problem that we did, we multiplied through by x squared, and one thing I wanna point out on that, that I didn't point out uh, in that last example is we don't have to worry about these inequality signs flipping. And the reason why is because if you have x squared, or in our case, we have x to the fourth, anytime you put a negative number in there, it's always gonna turn it positive. So therefore, I know that these inequality signs are not gonna switch. So because it's always positive, I am able to multiply through by x to the fourth or x squared, x to an even power. And these kind of problems, they'll always will give you an even power, because otherwise if it was odd, you couldn't say this was always gonna be true. If you multiply by x cubed, that could possibly make that untrue because of, if you have negative signs, that would affect the direction of the inequalities. So I wanna make that point clear here that you are able to multiply by uh, x to the fourth and it won't change the direction of your inequality signs. So let's do that. We're gonna multiply the whole equation through by x to the fourth, and once again, we know that the inequality is not gonna switch because you're multiplying by a positive number. Okay, so we now we have our original function in here, and that's, in, that's bigger than negative x to the fourth and less than x to the fourth. So here's, again, our three functions. We know that the limit as x approaches zero of negative x to the fourth is gonna equal the limit x approaches zero of positive x to the fourth, and that's all gonna equal uh, zero. If you plug zero in for all those, uh, you get this. So because of that reason, by the sandwich, or again, your squeeze theorem, depending on what book that you're using, by the sandwich or squeeze theorem, We can say that the limit as x approaches zero of x to the fourth sine of two over x, that's also gonna equal zero as well. Now if you're doing it this way, you must put a statement in your answer that says by the sandwich or squeeze theorem, then this is gonna be true. Okay, you can't just say put this and then put this as the answer. You gotta indicate what theorem that you're using because you have to support your answer. So in calculus, we're kind of getting into the habit of we need to show reasoning for our answers a little bit more. So for certain problems like this that involve a theorem, you have to indicate that and say that you're gonna be using it. So again, this is, this is equal, these are both equal to zero. So then, so because of that, the theorem says if these two equal zero, and we know automatically that the original one is bigger than negative x to the fourth, but less than x to the fourth, because of that, we know that our original statement must also go to zero.